Generally, it has been said that tricks and traps doesn't work against title player. But now, imagine a line where more than 15 GMs and 30 plus other title players has fallen for the trap. Isn't that something special? Well, that's the topic of today as we are going to witness one of the most high profile GM level trap in the Carlson's Queen's Gambit decline from the white perspective. After d4, black can choose either of the move order. I am going to show you the proper Queen's Gambit decline move order d5, c4, e6, and after knight to c3, rather than playing knight to f6, black plays this Carlson's modern move a6. So, idea is very simple. If white is not careful, then black is looking to capture on c4 and then quickly lash out with b5, which in some lines can hold on to this extra pawn. So, of course, white shouldn't allow this, and accordingly, one of the most popular choices c captures d5, e captures d5, knight to f3, knight to f6, and now bishop to g5, pinning down that knight threatening bishop captures f6, followed up with knight captures d5. Once again, the old move in this position is bishop to e7. However, that bishop will remain passive. So that's why if you look at the database here, by far, bishop to e6 is the modern reply, where black is remain flexible, not only is defending the d5 pawn, but later on, this dark square bishop can come out on the active square, namely d6. Okay, now we are dive into some forcing line. Bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, queen to b3, attacking two spots. But black is not bothered about d5 pawn, as if white captured this with the knight, then his knight will remain pinned. So accordingly, by far, the most logical response is b5, and after a4, renewing the threat of capturing this pawn, black plays the move b4, hitting the c3 knight. Well, we have reached to the most important junction of this trap, and you might think that knight captures d5 is completely not possible due to the simple move queen to d8 and that knight is a complete goner, right? And yes, indeed, it's true, except guess what? White is playing this wonderful move. <laughs> so isn't that look crazy because after queen to d8, black will be delighted as this knight is simply a goner because after e4 and c6, that knight indeed disappeared from the board. But the most amazing part is, this is exactly what is aiming for. There is a killer move here, and if you want, you can stop the video and find it by yourself. I'm showing you right now. Queen to e3, look at this, so beautiful. And still, I'm sure, just like me, if you see this position first time, you are scratching your head, what exactly going on? As after pawn takes d5, e takes d5, and queen captures d5, isn't black a whole piece up? And where is the compensation? There is absolutely no attack can see from this position. Well, that's the beauty about this trap. As following two moves by the Y, in fact, kill the black in the opening stage. Look at this first move, rook to c1. So now we have a simple threat. 
bishop to c4 and then push on with d5 whereupon white regain the piece with the interest and don't forget in some lines we can also throw this rook to c8 check so if black doesn't identify these threads correctly then the game might finish very quickly for example there is a game in the database where a strong black player has been crossed elegantly after he played this disastrous move knight to c6 okay no prize for guessing white's next reply bishop to c4 queen to a5 so black is indeed looking for the discover check but the big time problem is after bishop takes e6 pawn takes e6 and rook takes e6 not only white has regained his piece back but there is a indeed threat of capturing on a6 which even after the move b3 and king to e2 black cannot stop it and see yourself after all this how quickly game has been finished as queen to d5 has been played white give this check king to f7 and now the last piece joining into the party with rook to c1 well black thought that he is still in the game with bishop to d6 stopping rook to c7 and connecting the rook but after knight to g5 i think game is already a goner he played king to f8 only to get the root shock boom <laughs> well if your opponent king is dancing in the center then the sacrifices are bound to be happened let's see the beautiful sequence queen captures d6 queen to f3 check king to e7 now comes another dazzling move rook to c7 check black is forced to capture it but after queen check king to d8 knight to e6 king to c8 and queen captures c7 we have a picturesque checkmate on the table where throughout the game black has not given a single chance to show up his talent okay so by far the most accurate response here is bishop to e7 unpinning the e6 bishop so now there is no threat of rook to c8 as well as bishop to c4 but now amazingly enough white come up with the second big resource namely bishop to d3 and this time around the different threat that is bishop to e4 and nabi the exchange so accordingly once again if you look at the database white has tried two major choices number 1 taking out that rook or playing either queen to d7 or queen to b7 so let's see each by turn and find out what white has up in his sleeve number 1 rook to a7 highestly played move but i'm afraid this is a big time mistake as after bishop to e4 we are indeed threatening the move d5 something which is very difficult to stop a very model example for this line is a strong international master here continue with queen to b3 so his idea is to exchange the queen but this quickly backfired with the following nice sequence by white rook to c8 check you cannot take with the bishop as your queen is hanging and if you move the king then the rook drops so in the game by force black has to play bishop to d8 but after that white simply gobble up the piece with rook captures b8 and now funny enough white is more than happy if black exchanges the queen as the resulting position favors the white with a clear pawn advantage So in the game black choose the move rook to e7 trying to exploit white 
king and queen position. But white has calculated far more better than black. First he give this check, whereupon black just delighted by playing bishop to d7, executing what he wants to do. But exactly here, white shows the power of his calculation, starting with bishop captures d7, king takes d7, rook to b7 check. And finally, after king to c8 and rook captures e7, black to his horror find out that he can't even touch this rook as his queen is hanging. And if black take this queen, then white will obviously recapture with the rook. And in all of these lines, it is white who has emerged with the whole rook. Last but not least, probably the most accurate response here is moving the queen either to d7 or b7, let's say d7 in this game. And after bishop to e4, black should play queen to e7, giving up the rook, grabbing the two piece and holding on to this game. Kindly note that queen to a7 also stopping the move d5 as black can simply swap up the queen and getting the peace advantage. So the big question arises now, what to do? Whether white is going to capture the rook in the corner and satisfy with his position? Well, of course not, as this is what I like about this trap is, look at white's next move, queen to f4, unbelievable stuff. You are pieced down and you are playing such moves. Really, this is a crafty design trap. Well, now, White's idea is very nasty. He has stopped the exchange of the queen, so he is threatening two things. Number one, b5, and the second one, most important, rook to c7. And believe it or not, even though black is a piece of engine suggests that white is literally dominating this position. Well, the most accurate response here is knight to d7. But after d5, white indeed grabbed the piece back with a completely superior position. And I just like to highlight how problematic this position is as if you play a normal move such as castle in this position, then after pawn takes e6 and f takes e6, white can play the move queen to g4, whereupon in the most of this line is likely to gobble up this weak e6 pawn with a clear pawn advantage. So that's not a good choice for the black. And as per the database, let me show you a allied game where a 2600 plus GM continue here with G5 trying to complicate the game, but still it doesn't work out as after the following sequence, knight captures G5, bishop captures G5, queen captures G5, black played the move queen to D4, so that if you now take on E6, then queen captures e4 comes with a check. But now white shows the power of his position by simply castling on the king's side, saying that, yup, you can have another piece. But the end result is pawn takes e6, f takes e6, black king has been caught in the center. And it is just a matter of time where white rook unleashed and checkmate the black king. Look how quickly white won the game. Rook to even happen. Queen to g6. Queen to d5. So double attack. Looking at pawn as well as on the rook. So by force, black has to play king to e7. But after rook to c6, Sadly enough, 
the e6 pawn is going down with a check and moves like knight to f8 doesn't work here because of rook to c7. In the game, black goes for this tactical sequence, rook h to e8, and his idea is that after rook captures e6, he wants to play king to f8 so that white now cannot take this queen as black is simply threatening a checkmate. But now white shows how pathetic black position is by executing the following sequence. Queen to d6 check, king to f7, queen captures d7 check, king to f8. Once again we have this queen check and finally after king to f7, white deliver this queen to f4 check which by force wins the game as now black king has to go to the g file whereupon we can simply nap the queen with the check and forcing black to resign the game. That's it guys, I hope you enjoy and learn this high profile trap in the Carlson's QGD. Remember at this junction, play this nasty knight sacrifice with knight captures d5. And even after black winning the piece with the following sequence, white has a very nice move in this position, namely queen to e3, whereupon even though black get the piece, after rook to c1, no matter however black wriggles. In most of the lines, white regain the piece back with the interest. And the added bonus is, black king remain in the center, where white enjoy all sorts of attack. As many strong GMs and title players has fallen for this trap, you can use this line as a complete surprise weapon in the tournament practice. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment and I will meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.